powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Four people were injured, including a police officer, after a man opens fire outside a Pennsylvania courtroom. I'm Laura Podesta. I'll tell you what police say stopped the situation from becoming much worse. Three horses have been shot in the neck in rural grazing pastures. Authorities say it appears to be intentional. I'm Mallory Peebles with MTN News, and I'll tell you where it's happening and what's being done. Good morning to you. It is 6.30 here on your Thursday. I'm Missy O'Malley. Our top story for you now. Four people were shot and another killed after a gunman opened fire outside a crowded Pennsylvania courtroom. CBS's news correspondent Laura Podesta tells us what police believes to be the gunman's motive. Terror outside a Pennsylvania courtroom. A gentleman comes in, sweeps the room with the gun, and it ends up being on me. And all I'm doing is staring at this gun, staring at him, and praying, dear God, don't let this be my day. Police in Masontown credit one of their own for stopping a mass shooting when shortly after 2 p.m. yesterday, a man walked into the lobby and opened fire. As the gunman began shooting, officers rapidly entered the lobby in an attempt to save lives. One of those officers shot and killed the gunman, but not before two men and a woman were injured by the gunfire. A police officer was also shot in the hand. All are expected to survive. The suspect was due in court that day on charges related to a domestic violence incident, according to police. One of the cases involved a male charged with strangulation, aggravated assault, terroristic threats, and simple assault. This was a result of a domestic relation, a domestic matter incident, which occurred a few weeks ago. Police insist had it not been for the swift response of the officer who brought the suspect down, this could have had a much more tragic ending. He protected over 30 to 40 people from injury or death. It remains unclear who exactly the man was targeting in his rampage. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. However, CBS's affiliate KDKA is reporting that sources say that they believe the civilian woman injured in the shooting was the suspect's wife. That story will be developing. We'll have more on that on CBS This Morning. Matt joins me now. A little cool down. As you mentioned, you gave us yeah. a plenty heads up that Wednesday would be cloudier and cooler. Yeah, we're starting off with some clouds and some light rain this morning, but I don't think it's a big issue for most of us. We do have some high mountain snow that was showing up uh, not too long ago. Most of us dealing with pretty quiet conditions. You can see a little bit of a breeze. Uh, air quality is great right now. Um, basically dealing with temperatures into the 40s for the early morning. There's those high mountain snow showers. Now that all that white is a uh, blip in the radar. Uh, most of us dealing with temperatures into the upper 50s and low 60s for the afternoon. We're going to talk more about a bit of a warm up for the end of the week. That's all coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. Our top local story for you now here at 632. Three horses, three gunshots in six months. The Gallatin County Sheriff's Office is investigating a case of animal cruelty. MTN's Mallory Peebles visited the ranch where the latest horse that was shot is now recovering. For more than 40 years, Jake's Horses has been offering everything from trail rides to pack trips. But when the horses aren't here in Big Sky, they're in Madison Valley. And that's where the crimes have been taking place. They're our livelihood, but they're also our animals. It's why they say the crime is hurting more than just the horses. For them to be harmed or injured in a circumstance that could be totally avoided is... It's pretty defeating and frustrating and also really scary. It started in March. He was the first. Friday was shot in the neck, then Lacey, and then four months went by. Everyone hoped it was over. My dad called me and it was pretty devastating. Julie Grim Lisk owns Gatsby, a two-year-old paint horse found shot in the neck. He's now receiving round-the-clock care to make sure the bullet wounds don't get infected. This is a pretty critical injury. We're spending a lot of time um, using saline to flush the wound, putting um, all sorts of medications. The Gallatin County Sheriff says the shootings are being investigated, but due to the remote pasture location, it's a tough case. Hi, Onion. Grim Lisk isn't confident the case will ever get solved, but says what's most important is that it stops. Maybe it'll send a message to whoever's doing this that people are on guard and we're paying attention and that this isn't right. So no more horses get hurt and everyone can focus on enjoying this beautiful country and the animals helping show it off. All of the horses shot have survived their injuries. Reporting from Big Sky, I'm Mallory Peebles with MTN News.
Now, if you do have any information about this case, you can contact the Gallatin County Sheriff's Office. And it's not just adults who are homeless in our community, but children too. And they're doing their best to get an education in our public schools. MTN's Emma Hamilton has more. Oftentimes, when people think of homeless students within our community, they tend to think of high school aged kids. Well, in fact, 48 of the 109 students that were identified as homeless in the Bozeman School District last year were elementary age kids. Um, and that could be um, students that are living in their car with their families. They could be in a shelter like Family Promise or Haven, um, even the warming center as well. They could be living in a motel or doubled up with friends and family. Most of these kids are originally from the Bozeman community. When they qualify for the McKinney Vento Act, the district is able to provide assistance in many areas. If they are, we can automatically sign them up for free lunch program in the school for the entire school year. We can be very creative with transportation if need be to get them to and from school as well. Um, and making sure, for instance, all of our students are automatically referred to our safety, which is our trauma-informed program, and other supports within the schools. The district doesn't stop helping these kids and their families once the school day is over. They also provide clothes, food, and other necessities. That's all because of our community. So we have donations. We have a homeless assistance fund um, that really goes towards helping with those basic necessities. Um, we also work with a lot of community organizations, so connecting them to HRDC for housing, for instance, um, or the food bank. Um, but we also have our shelf at the high school where it's not only for high school students, I can have a family meet me here and if they've already gone to the food bank for instance, um, that month they can come here and get some additional food if needed. If you want to and are able to help these kids, you can contact Anna Edwards and all of her information is on the Bozeman School District's website. Reporting from Bozeman, Emma Hamilton, MTN News. Thank you, Emma. And controversy continues in Anaconda after the principal at the high school was placed on administrative leave over a text message that he's accused of sending to a former student. MTN's John Amy was in Anaconda to get the reaction. The principal here at Anaconda High School, who's also the principal of the junior high, Sean Hansen, was placed on paid administrative leave by the Anaconda School District. This action was taken after reports came up a couple weeks ago of an apparent inappropriate text message that was sent by the principal to a 19-year-old male who was a former student at the school. According to Anaconda Police, the 19-year-old said Hansen had sent him a text message that he believed was asking him out on a date. Police looked into the matter and found no illegal activity, saying that this was text between two adults and at this point are not seeking any criminal charges. An Anaconda citizen I spoke to who used to work for the school district said he knows Sean Hansen and doesn't believe the school district is treating him fairly in this incident. He did a lot for the kids, especially extra time putting in, not just the school hours, but after school, weekends. He did anything you asked him. He added that if police found no criminal activity in this matter, Hansen should not have been placed on administrative leave. The chief of police said, what are we going to charge him on? There's no law broken, so they're out of it. So, I mean, what else can you do? In Anaconda, John Amy, MTN News. Now, the school district has called the Montana School Boards of Association to investigate the incident. We reached out to the Anaconda School District for comment, but the district has not responded. And you may have received a message saying that you've won a lottery jackpot. But it's certainly almost too good to be true. In this week's Fraud Watch, MTN's Jonathan Imbarian looks at how you can identify a lottery scam. The scam always begins in a similar way. Someone gets an unsolicited email or an unsolicited letter and it says, you won and you need to spend some money in order to get the prize or wire us some money and then we'll do X, Y, or Z for you or give us your bank account information and we'll just put it right in there. That is not how a legitimate lottery works. Leaders with the Montana Lottery have identified the warning signs of lottery fraud. We can always spot a scam because we know how a legitimate lottery works. A real lottery will never contact the winner. They won't even know the winner, just the winning numbers. And a legitimate lottery will never ask you to pay money up front. 
A final thing to remember, especially if you get a letter from out of the country. If you didn't buy a ticket, you definitely did not win. If you have any questions about whether something is legitimate, you can always ask the Montana Lottery. That is our most common call about a scam, is not that I think I've been scammed, but this looks suspicious, can you guys take a look at it? And I've never seen a suspicious one that wasn't a scam. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Now, lottery leaders say they have seen some cases where scammers intimidate, or excuse me, it, yeah, intimidate an actual game in Montana, like the Powerball or Mega Millions. But those games are only sold through legitimate state lotteries. And like any other, they would not contact a, a winner directly. Thank you so much for joining us on this Thursday morning. In a moment, we had to Ronan, Montana, where a couple's love for their adult son with autism is changing the way that we look at care for those affected by autism. But first, here's Gail King with a sneak peek at the top stories to come at 7 here on CBS. Good morning to you ahead on CBS this morning. The woman accusing Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh faces a Friday deadline to agree to testify. Her lawyers are pushing back, though. They're demanding an FBI investigation. Former federal prosecutor Fran Townsend joins us why she says a bureau investigation may not be the best way to find the truth. And Ticketmaster is accused of helping drive up the prices you pay. We'll talk to the undercover reporter who helped expose the alleged secret program. We'll see you 7 o'clock on the dot.